so much love. He's really a lesser, he's like freshly cast gold. I go down to Gauda, I'm a beautiful son of my sister. He's endured with the ever so much love of God. His radiant lustre is like a cloud of fresh butter. His fresh attire is arranged in ever new fashions. He relishes ever new mellows of love for Krishna. He relishes ever new mellows of love for Krishna. He shines a nightfold new ways while executing the nightfold process of devotion. He is permitted with most auspicious loving nature. I go on to love the other beautiful son of Mars. He is absorbed in devotion to sweet Hari. He maintains the chanting of the name of Hari. While chanting, he counts the holy name on finger of his hands. He is addicted to the names of Hari. He always has tears of love welling in his eyes. I go on to the Gautama, the beautiful son of Mars. He is always removing the suffering of mental existence for mankind. He is the goal of life of persons who are dedicated to their supreme interest. He inspires men to become like honey bees, eager for the honey of Krishna Prema. He moves the burning fever of the world by God on the Gaura, the beautiful son of Mother He motivates the pure devotion unto himself. He is most attractive to his beloved servitors. Why is dramatic that? By his dramatic dances, dancing, he exhibits the characteristics of his, the, the king of paramours. He causes the minds of beautiful young women's women to dance. I go on the ground, I'm a beautiful son of others. He plays Rathas as his throat, emits sweet, melodious sounds, and the vibrant notes of the Veena was softly played. He thus inspires the devotees to perform dramatic dances that is infused with aspects of his. Own devotion as well. I go down to Laura, the beautiful son of Mother Sanchi, is accompanied by the Sankirtana movement, which is the religious practice for the age of him. He is the son of Madhavaras from Indian. He is extraordinarily brilliant ornament of the earth. His preaching mode is suitably adapted to the cycle of birth and death. His consciousness is fixed in meditation on his own form of vision. He is always accompanied by his hands to the Lord. I go to Gaura, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. His eyes, the soles of his feet, and his clothing are reddish like the color that heralds the rising of sun. The rising sun. As he utters his own name, his voice scatters. He awakens a sweet flavor to the life throughout the years. I go down to Gaura, the beautiful son of Mother Sachi. Jai Sri Sri Sutrashtra Ki Jai. Sarabha Matasarya Ki Jai. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, you can hear me, Prabhu. So, thank you so much. We hand over session to Sundar Gopal Prabhu. Krishna Prabhu, Dhanavad Pranam, Mr. Prabhupada. Shama Bhesha, Mr. Prabhupada. Yeah, happy New Year. Thank you, Mr. Prabhupada. Happy New Year. The same
So, there is any question you can please ask Prabhu. I have a question for you, Prabhu. Uh, Prabhu, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, so, Prabhu, uh, my question is uh, in the Bhagavad Gita, so Krishna is uh, when he's starting to explain to Arjuna, he talks about Karma Yoga, then he talks about Jnana Yoga, then he again talks about Karma Yoga action and Krishna consciousness then Dhyana Yoga, and then finally Bhakti Yoga. In the words of Srila Prabhupada, the, this Karma Yoga, Buddhi Yoga, pretty much uh, resonates with Bhakti Yoga. It's not very different from Bhakti Yoga. So that being the case, uh, why is it that um, Bhakti Yoga is explained independent of Karma Yoga and Buddhi Yoga? And if Bhakti Yoga is the ultimate uh, you know, goal, then why is Krishna following this process of explaining it, explaining in this order? Is there any significance to the order? Is something that I wanted to understand. So Krishna, can you hear me? I can hear you. So Krishna is explaining to Arjuna uh, how to do devotion, how to go to him. So there are different paths, you know. There's karma, there's jnana, and uh, you know, and there's bhakti. Hmm? So he's telling every, how to get to surrender to him. You want to read this? Yeah. Supreme Personality of God had said, My dear Rutva, because I desire that human beings may achieve perfection, I have presented three paths of advancement. The path of knowledge, the path of work, and the path of devotion. Besides these three, there is absolutely no other means of elevation. Among these three paths, Jnana Yoga, the path of philosophical speculation is recommended for those who are disgusted with material life and are thus detached from ordinary fruitive activities. Those who are not disgusted with material life having many desires yet to fulfill, should seek perfection through the path of Karma Yoga. If somehow or other, by good fortune, one develops faith in hearing and chanting my glories, such a person being neither very disgusted with nor very attached to material life, should achieve perfection through the path of loving devotion to me. As long as one is not satiated by fruitive activity and is not awakened his taste for devotional service by Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, one has to act according to the regulative principles of the Vedic injunctions. <coughs> My dear Udva, a person who is situated in his prescribed duty properly worshipping by Vedic sacrifices, but not desiring the fruit of result of such worship, will not go to the heavenly planets. Similarly, 
by not performing forbidden activities he will not go to hell i brought the previous translation uh, it says um, by okay, this is 112010 right before prove if you if you don't mind you go to the previous translation bro it says my dear rudva person who is situated in his prescribed duty properly worshiping by vedic sacrifices but not desiring the fruit results of chesh he says will not go to the heavenly planets what does it mean bro if you are worshiping the lord for some fruitive result then in the vedas there are methods recommended for you to go to the heavenly planets okay but if you are doing this and not interested in actually desiring to go to heaven then you will not go there okay okay so this is a this is better than going to the heavenly planets is that's right. what is indicating okay got it yes understood one who is situated in the prescribed duty free from sinful activities and cleansed from material contamination in this very life obtains transcendental knowledge or be fortunate devotional service unto me the resonance of both heaven and hell is desire human birth on the earth planet because human life facilitates the achievement of transcendental knowledge and love of god whereas neither heavenly nor hellish bodies efficiently provide such opportunities a human being whose wives should never desire promotion to heavenly planets or residence in hell indeed a human being should also never desire permanent residence on the earth for by such absorption in the material body one becomes foolishly negligent of one's actual self interest a wise person knowing that although the material body is subject to death it can still avoid the perfection of one's life should not foolishly neglect to take advantage of this opportunity before it arrives so you understand now hmm so it's but this this karma yoga that is described here prabhu how is how is karma yoga different from bhakti yoga or are we saying karma yoga is included in bhakti yoga so when we say karma yoga no there is karma yoga that is this talking about is it's explained here i give you the example na huh? it is said here plain here Okay, here. Uh, I even just said, "Ma, I'm feeling this. I'm feeling this." So, pay up to the top. those ignorant of the real self interest are wandering on the path of material existence gradually heading towards darkness why would the vedas further encourage them in sense gratification if they are although foolishly although foolish submissively pay heed to vedic injunctions so the vedic injunction promote this karma kanda thing you know so that is mm. called karma yoga this karma kanda thing okay can you read persons with perverted intelligence do not understand this actual purpose of vedic knowledge and instead propagate as the highest vedic truth the flowery statements of the vedas that promise material rewards those in actual knowledge of the vedas never speak in that way 
So they are into, you know, this karma kind of thing, you know. They perform all this, this uh, rituals, you know. There's so many sacrifices, you know. It's especially if you are coming from that line, you know, in your background, they always want to do so many pujas, you know. Mm. And that's actually the karma, karma yoga, you know. So the full of lust, avarice, and greed mistake mere flowers to be the actual fruit of life. Bewildered by the glare of fire and suffocated by its smoke, they cannot recognize their own true identity. Mm. Right. So that is, is karma yoga, karma. Prabhu. So karma yes. yoga means anything yes. which is done with an intent to seek Get, results. Yeah, they are interested in getting some material benefit through the Vedic system because the Vedas. They have a whole thing about how to do sacrifice for getting something in return, you know. Mm. You can read. The mighty Udva, persons dedicated to sense gratification obtained through honoring the Vedic rituals, cannot understand that I am situated in everyone's heart and that the entire universe is not different from me and emanates from me. Indeed, they are just like persons whose eyes are covered by fog. But so they, they are more into the rituals and trying to do this Indra Yagya and Vamana Puja and so many things to get some material benefits, you know. Mm. But they cannot understand Supreme Lord by this program. Understand? Pro, pro, I, I thought Karma Yoga also includes uh, giving the results of our activities to the Lord. That's also Karma Yoga, right? Yeah, because when you do this thing, this sacrifice, you have to give all the shares to different, different demigods and to the Lord, you know. Mm. But by doing that, you just don't develop a pure love for Krishna, you see. You understand? Those who just want to sense gratification cannot understand the confidential conclusion of Vedic knowledge explained by me. Taking pressure and violence, they cruelly slaughter innocent animals and sacrifice their own sense gratification and thus worship demigods, forefathers, and leaders among ghostly creatures. Such passion for violence, however, is never encouraged within the process of Vedic sacrifice. So they do this thing also, you know, Bali Dan, they call it, hmm. you know, part of their Vedic rituals. You, see. Hmm. Hmm? you understand? So when they do this kind of thing, uh, again, read on. Just as a foolish businessman gives up his real wealth in useless business speculation, foolish persons give up all that is actually valuable in life and instead pursue promotion to material heaven, which although pleasing to hear about is actually unlike, unreal like a dream. Such a bewildered person imagines within the heart that they achieve all material blessings. So this is a karma kanda section of the Vedas, you know. It is still, it is called karma yoga. See? Mm -hmm. You understand? Whereas in the Bhagavad Gita, Prabhupada, you know, he didn't want to encourage this. He translated the karma yoga as actually bhakti yoga. Uh, understand? Okay. So you know, this those established in material passion, goodness, goodness and ignorance worship the particular demigods and other deities headed by Indra, who manifest the same modes of passion, goodness, or ignorance. They fail, however, to properly worship me. So they cannot understand Krishna and they cannot surrender to him, you know, fully. Mm -hmm. The worship of the demigods think we should worship the demigods in this life and by our sacrifices we shall go to heaven and enjoy them. When that enjoyment is finished, we shall return to this world and take birth as great householders and aesthetic families. Being excessively proud and greedy, such persons are bewildered with the flowery words of the Vedas. They are not attracted to topics about me, the Supreme God. So here you must understand this is what actually called Karma Yoga, huh? Mm. The Vedas divided into three divisions ultimately reveal the living entity as pure spirit soul. The Vedic seers and mantras however deal in esoteric terms and I am also pleased by such confidential descriptions. 
So it's not an easy subject matter, you know. Because if you want to enjoy material benefit, it's always not very easy, you know. The transcendental sort of the Vedas is very difficult to comprehend and manifest on different levels within the prana senses and mind. This Vedic sound is unlimited, very deep and unfathomable, just like the ocean. Uh, hmm. So, it's not some something that, you know, everybody can do, you know, it requires amount of surrender also. So you can read again. As the unlimited, unchanging and omnipotent personality of God dwelling within all living beings, I personally established the Vedic sound vibration in the form of Omkara within all living entities. It is thus perceived subtly just like a single strand of fiber on a lotus stalk. Just as a spider brings forth from its heart its web and emits it through its mouth, the Supreme Personality of God manifests himself as a reverberating, premeable vital air comprising all sacred Vedic meters and full of transcendental pleasure. Thus, the Lord from the ethereal sky of his heart creates the great and limitless Vedic sound with the agency of his mind, which conceives of variegated sounds such as sparshas. The Vedic sound branches out in thousands of directions around with the different letters expanded from the syllable home, the consonants, vowels, sibilants and semi-vowels. The Veda is then elaborated by many verbal varieties expressed in different meters, each having four more syllables than the previous one. Ultimately, the Lord again withdraws the manifestation of Vedic sound himself. So you see, everything is coming from the Lord, you know. Hmm. Then, but they, they want to enjoy the material benefit, you know. So that process is given in the Vedic scriptures. Okay? Hmm. I'm sure you all you are from you know you all know this mantras. Gayatri, you know, correct? Yeah. I don't know other things, but Vedic meters are Gayatri, Ushni, Kanushtu, Vedati, Pankti, Trishtu, Jagati, Ati Chanda, Atyashti. Ati Jagati, Ati Virat. I, I don't know if everyone knows all this. Maybe some pundits know. Huh? Uh, but I know only Gayatri. The Gayatri has 24 syllables. Usnik has 28. Anusut 32 and so on, you know, increases. Mm -hmm. so what are those mantras? I guess you have to find somebody who knows this Vedic, you know. In the entire world, no one but me actually understands the confidential purpose of Vedic knowledge. As people do not know what the Vedas are actually prescribing in the ritualistic injunctions of Karma Kanda, or what object is actually being indicated in the formulas of worship for the Upasana Kanda, or that which is elaborately discussed through various hypotheses in the Jnana Kanda section of the Vedas. So you understand, so this, of mm. course, the last verse is more important. I am the ritualistic sacrifice engine to the Vedas and I am the worshipable deity. It is I who am presented as the various philosophical hypothesis and it is I alone who am then refuted by philosophical analysis. The transcendental sound vibration thus establishes me as the essential meaning of all Vedic knowledge. The Vedas elaborately analyzing all material duality as the nothing but my illusory potency ultimately completely negate this duality and achieve their own satisfaction. So try to understand that actually Krishna is the source of all, you know, Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita, no, 1515, 15. right? Yeah. I am the Vedas, I am the know of the Vedant, I am, you know, everything. So we have to know that, yes, this is a method there. If you can, you want to do it, you can go and use it to get material benefits, you know. So people who desire very strongly, you know, material benefits, they are encouraged to do this, you see. And it will take time for them to come to 
accept the authority of Krishna, not by doing this program, but actually in the process, if they come to meet that devotee, then yes, devotional service will start. You understand, without meeting a devotee, devotional service cannot take place. You cannot go and become a devotee by worshipping these demigods, you know. You know, Despite the cultivation of Vedic knowledge is unlimited and the worship of different demigods with the symptoms of Vedic mantras, demigod worship does not help one to understand the supreme powerful personality of God. So karma kanda is a very long-winded process. As you see in Bhagavad Gita, those who do this, they are promoted to heaven, correct? When the piety finish, they come down again. So it's, a, you know, because they don't come in contact with the devotee. So unless they come in contact with the devotee, then only, you know, their devotional service starts, you know. It is not possible eh, by any other way, you know. Unless one is favored by a pure devotee, one cannot attain the platform of devotional service. To say nothing of Krishna Bhakti, one cannot even be relieved from the bondage of material existence. You understand? That's why Krishna told Arjuna, Trigunya Vishaya Veda, Naistrigunya Bhavarjuna, Bhagavad Gita, you know, go above the Vedas. They deal only in the three modes of true nature. Correct? Mm -hmm. So our idea is that although there's karma yoga is there, but ultimately the last instruction is most important, no? Sarva Dharma Parityaja Mamekam Sharanambuja, right? Mm -hmm. You understand? So we all are kind of rotating in this karma kind of thing, you know, because work to worship stuff is all this karma kind of, you know. When a person is born, then that's the only thing that they, they are kind of trained to do, you know. Huh? You can see this verse. This is all the, the whole consciousness is to uh, try to, you know, There is some and substance of this whole material life, you know. Hmm? This is all it is, you know. There is a whole idea is this, you know. Simply by material birth, human beings become attached to their minds to personal sense gratification, long duration of life, sense activities, bodily strength, sexual potency, and friends and family. Their minds are thus absorbed in that which defeats their actual self interest. This is the training. Everybody gets this training. Study hard, you know, war, become successful, get a nice job, get a wife, get the house, get the car, get the bank. I mean, on and on and on and on and on. You know. They never train or thought to how to get out of this mess. No, nobody teaches this. You understand? So naturally, they'll be attracted to this. You know, they say, oh, Krishna also say, Karma Kanda also you can, you know. Huh? I will go back by Karma Kanda. What nonsense? You understand? They, they cannot understand. I, all of us could not understand until we met Prabhupada, correct? Right. So that attachment with the pure devotee is what actually makes the difference in our life. You know, 
this is why we are giving today's class you know we are just finished one class and it says about how this prachana prachana by he fell down he became a woman in his next life uh, fortunately by some piety he became the wife of a very great devotee malaya dwaja who happened to be a pandya king you know south india and by associating with him and serving him she went back to godhead that soul went back to godhead you understand it like us you know we all are rotating you know but some good fortune this life we have come in contact with the mahabagavat this is the turning point in our life if we take advantage we again try to opinionate like what they are doing in iskon about prabhupad then it's finish or even other retreat camps they are not fully 100% surrendered to bro you understand this point the one have to learn how to understand this things properly then yes spiritually they will grow as this now we are at you know you will come to understand the devotional service to krishna is all in all you know hmm they explain here narada continued who who you are who are free from all sinful activity no one can counteract the effects of productive activity simply by manufacturing a different activity devoid of krishna consciousness all such activity is due to our ignorance when we have a troublesome dream we cannot relieve it with the troubles and hallucination one can counteract a dream only by waking similarly our material existence is due to our ignorance and illusion unless we wake into krishna consciousness we cannot be relieved of such dreams for the ultimate solution to all problems is awaken to krishna consciousness Hello. Hmm. You can read the purport. There are two kinds of fruit of activity. We can place the burden on the head, or we can place it on the shoulder. Actually, keeping the burden in either place is the same. The transfer, however, is taking place under the name of counteraction. In this connection, Pallad Maharaj said that fools and rascals in the material world plan so gorgeously for bodily comfort without knowing that such arrangements, even if successful, are only Maya. people are working hard day and night for the illusory happiness of the body there is not a way to achieve happiness one has to get out of this material entanglement and return home back to god that is real happiness the way that therefore enjoy don't remain in the darkness of this material world material uh, yeah don't remain in the darkness of this material world go to the light of the spiritual world to contract the distress of this material body one has to take on another distress condition Both situations are only illusion. There is no gain in taking on one trouble to contact another trouble. The conclusion is that one cannot be perpetually happy as long as one exists in this material world. The only remedy is to get out of this material world together and turn home back to God. I understand. Hmm. Yeah. Although the performer of fruitive activities desires perpetual happiness, it is clearly observed that the materialistic workers are often unhappy and only occasionally satisfied, thus proving that they are not independent or in control of their destiny. When a person is always under the superior control of another, how can he expect any valuable results from his own fruitive action? Hmm. it is observed within the material world that sometimes even an intelligent person is not happy similarly sometimes even a great fool is happy the concept of becoming happy through expertly performing material activities is simply a useless exhibition of false egoism
even if people know how to achieve happiness and avoid unhappiness they still do not know the process by which death will not be able to exert its power over them so you see how foolish they are you know? mm. hmm? yes yes hmm? Can read this. Death is not all pleasing, and since everyone is act exactly like a condemned man being led to the place of execution, what possible happiness can people derive from material objects of the gratification they provide? <clears throat> hmm? That material happiness of which we hear is just promotion to heavenly planets for celestial enjoyment. It's just like that material happiness we've already experienced. Both are polluted by jealousy and envy, decay, and death. Therefore, just as an attempt to raise crops becomes fruitless if there are many, there are many problems like crop disease, insect plague, or drought. Similarly, the attempt to attain material happiness, either on earth or on heavenly planes, is always fruitless because of innumerable obstacles. If one performs ethical sacrifices and fruitful rituals without any mistake. or contamination one will achieve a heavenly situation in the next life but even this result which is only achieved by perfect performance of brutal rituals will be vanquished by time now hear of this if on earth one performs sacrifices for the satisfaction of the demigods he goes to the heavenly planets but just like a demigod he enjoys all of the heavenly pleasures he has earned by his performance <coughs> Having achieved the heavenly planets, the performer of ritualistic sacrifices travels in a glowing airplane, which he obtains as a result of his piety on earth. Being glorified by songs sung by the Gandharvas and dressed in beautifully charming clothes, he enjoys life surrounded by heavenly goddesses. Accompanied by heavenly women, the enjoyer of the fruits of sacrifice goes on pleasure rides in a wonderful airplane, which is decorated with circles of tinkling bells. And which flies wherever it desires, being relaxed, comfortable, and happy in the heavenly pleasure gardens, he does not consider that he is exhausting the fruits of his piety, and will soon fall down to the mortal world. Until his pious results are used up, the performer of sacrifice enjoys life in the heavenly planets. When the pious results are exhausted, or he falls down to the pressure levels of heaven, being moved against his desire to force a terminal time. <coughs> so this karma yoga thing of course you can go to krishna he says how to go you cannot go like this no mm -hmm. you follow prabhu this nishkama karma yoga they say right prabhu nishkama karma yoga is also explained in bhagavad gita so that's that's Uh, basically performing the same thing without um, expecting results when you say karma is got three kind no? one is karma hmm? yeah i think i will explain this better if i show you this verse it is in the give me a minute eh? Okay, here your question is asked by this many years ago. Okay. 
King Nimi said, Oh, great sages, please speak to us about the process of Karma Yoga. Purified by this process of dedicating one's practical work to the Supreme, a person can very quickly free himself from all material activities, even in this life, and thus enjoy pure life on the transcendental platform. So he's asking this question you're asking, no? Yeah. Once in the past, in the presence of him, not this one. Sri Avil Khurta, Khurta replied, prescribed duties, non-performance of such duties and forbidden activities are topics one can properly understand through authorized study of the Vedic literature. This difficult subject matter can never be understood by mundane speculation. The authorized Vedic literature is a sound incarnation of the personality of God himself, and thus Vedic knowledge is perfect. Even the greatest learned scholars of Bible are in attempts to understand the science of action if they neglect the authority of Vedic knowledge. So you try to understand the three kinds of duties. Huh? Mm. So here you can see karma, akarma, vikarma. Mm. I think you know what is karma, right? right. Action. Uh, based on the Vedic, there's karma kanda, the thing, you know. And then mm. akarma. Do you know what is akarma? That means no result in reaction. And of course, vikarma, forbidden activities. You know? Mm. Right. So, you have to know all these three things. Then, but Krishna say, yeah, you, it's bewildering, you know. So therefore, to be guided by this, you need a pure devotee, you know. Mm. Uh, actually, we'll read on, then I will explain to you further. Huh? Okay. Childish and foolish people are attracted to materialistic fruitive activities, although the actual goal of life is to become free from such activities. Therefore, the Vedic injunctions indirectly lead one to the path of ultimate, ultimate liberation by first prescribing fruitive religious activities, just as the father promises his child candy so that the child will take his medicine. So you see how Karma Kanda is given in this Vedic, <coughs> you know, mm -hmm. it to encourage, you know, you understand. Mm -hmm. So that is the motive, because some people are ad addicted to it. What do you want to do? You understand? Mm -hmm. uh? If an ignorant person who has not conquered the material senses does not adhere to the Vedic injunctions, certainly he will engage in sinful and irreligious activities. Thus, his reward will be repeated birth and death. So this is also explained in the Bhagavad Gita in ch chapter 3, text 16. One does not follow the Shastric injunctions, then he will be subject to doing sinful activities. Mm -hmm. And when you do sinful activities, bad, no? Right. You understand? So to save them, they're given some rules and regulations. You follow? By executing Without attachment, regulated activities prescribed in the Vedas, offering the results of such work to the Supreme Lord, one attains the perfection of freedom from the bondage of material work. The material fruit of results offered in the Vedic scriptures are not the actual goal of Vedic knowledge, but are meant for stimulating the interest of the performer. Right. Understand, unless he offers it to Krishna. Hmm. So that is the beginning of his piety, you understand? Mm. So in the Bhagavad Gita in 728, 
ये शंत अंतगत पापन जनानम पुण्य कर्म नम सो वेन यू गेट दिस पुण्य कर्म यू नो एंड हिप्स एंड हिप्स ऑफ पायस एक्टिविटी एंड यू स्टॉप डूइंग सिंफुल एक्टिविटीज देन यू कैन कम टू टेक अप द डिवोशनल सर्विस यू अंडरस्टैंड Of course, in the process, you have to meet the devotee. You understand the point? No. One who desires to quickly cut the knot of false ego, which binds the spirit soul, should worship the supreme Lord Keshava by the regulations found in Vedic literature, such as the tantras. मास्टर Having obtained the mercy of the spiritual master, the wheels to the side of the injunctions of Vedic scriptures. The devotee should worship the supreme personality word in this particular personal form, the Lord. The devotee finds most attractive. So, of course, this then leads to one devotional service, you know. Hmm. Because it goes on to explain how you do your deity worship and all that. This verse is uh, next. So the point is that karma, we karma and our karma. understand mm. we cannot do we are we are trained to do we are trained to do our karma our karma yeah. you know so by doing this we are developing uh, our devotional service because it is without any result in action mm. but if you do karma and vi karma that's bad because by doing karma you go to the heavenly planet and by doing vi karma you go to hellish planet mm. just now we read that verse you know in 11 20 by doing not doing by not desiring you will not go to heaven mm. by not doing sinful act you will not go to hell but you should not also stay in the earth right, right? you follow yeah. so our whole program here is to finish this whole thing and get back to our original position as servant of krishna you understand this point yeah. explain here in this verse The great endeavor one undergoes in executing the ordinary social and religious duties of the Varnashram system, in performing austerities and adhering to the Vedas, culminate only in the achievement of mundane fame and opulence. But by respecting and attentively hearing the suggestion of the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord, as per the Vedas of Fortune, one can remember His lotus feet. Yes, sir. Remembrance of Lord Krishna's lotus feet destroys everything inauspicious. and avoids the greatest good fortune it purifies the heart and bestows devotion to the supreme soul along with knowledge and rich with realization and renunciation <coughs> you understand yeah. until you come to this point then it's, it's going to be a cycle going up and down up and down up and down and that's why it says you know in this verse here in this verse you can see Okay, here. 
in this verse, Narada is speaking to this king, you know, he said you should not take up this karma kanda thing and all that. So then the, the king replied, my dear Brahmana, whatever you said, I've heard with great attention considering all of it. I've come to the conclusion that the Acharya's teachers who engaged me in fruitive activity did not know this confidential knowledge. They were aware of it, why did they not explain it to me? You understand? Mm. This cannot be explained by anybody, only by a pure devotee. Understand? Hmm? Can you read this? Actually, the so-called scholars and leaders of modern material society do not really know the goal of life. They described in Bhagavad Gita as Maya Apaharta Jnana, 7.15. They appear to be very learners, but actually the influence of the illusory energy has taken away their knowledge. Real knowledge means searching out Krishna. Vedesh to Sarvaira Hameya Vidya. All Vedic knowledge is meant for searching out Krishna because Krishna is the origin of everything. Janma Rishriyata 111. The Bhagavad Gita tend to Krishna says, Aham Adiri Devana. I am the source of the demigods. Thus, Krishna is the origin and beginning of all demigods, including Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, and all of this. The Vedic ritualistic ceremonies are concerned with satisfying different demigods, but unless one is very advanced, he cannot understand the original personality, Sri Krishna, Govinda Mahadi Purushan Brahma Jami. After hearing the instructions of Narada, King Bharishma came to his senses. The real goal of life is to attain devotional service to the Supreme Personality of God. The king therefore decided to reject the so called priestly orders that simply engage their followers in ritualistic ceremonies without giving effective instructions about the goal of life. The present moment, the churches, temples, and mosques all over the world are not attracting people because foolish priests cannot elevate their followers to the platform of knowledge. Not being aware of the real goal of life, they simply keep their congregations in ignorance. Consequently, those well educated have become uninterested in the ritualistic ceremonies. At the same time, they are not benefited with the real knowledge. This Krishna consciousness movement is therefore very important uh, for the enlightenment of all classes. Following the footsteps of Maharaj Parishman, Everyone should take advantage of this Krishna consciousness movement and abandon the stereotype ritualistic ceremonies that go under the grab of so many garb of so many religions. The Goswami is from the very beginning differed from the priestly class that was engaged in ritualistic ceremonies. Sri Goswami compiled his Hari Bhakti Vilash to the guidance of the Vaishnavas. The Vaishnavas not caring for the lifeless activity of the priestly class, take to full Krishna consciousness and become perfect in this very life. That is described in the previous verses. Paramahamsa Saranam, taking shelter of the Paramahamsa, the liberated soul, and becoming successful in this life. You understand? My dear Brahmana, there are contradictions between your instructions and those of my spiritual teachers who engage me in productive activities. I now can understand the distinction between devotional service, knowledge, and renunciation. I had some doubts about them, but you have now very kindly dissipated all these doubts. I can now understand how even the great sages have bewildered the real purpose of life. Of course, there is no question of sense gratification. Uh, yeah. The results of whatever living entity does in this life are enjoyed in the next life. The expert knows of the Vedic conclusion say that one enjoys and suffers the results of his past activities. But practically it is seen that the body that performed the work in the last birth is already lost. So how is it possible to enjoy or suffer the reaction that it in the body? <coughs> He's asking that it's a different question now. Right. Okay. Right. right. So the point is this, that karma kanda, yes, you can carry on doing your thing, you will get your results. But you will be circulating heavenly planet and back and forth and back and forth. So the idea is to get like here, the king was fortunate to meet Narada Muni. Right. And he realized, oh, this is nonsense. Why I should do this program? Mm. 
Actually, we all were caught in the nonsense. Right. You understand? Because our teachers, father, mother, that's all they knew. You understand? Sorry. That's why until we meet a pure devotee, we cannot escape from the cycle of birth and death. That's not possible. No. That's why we are saying again, we are fortunate that we have in this life somehow or other come in contact with the pure devotees. Not only that, also contacted ISKM whereby we managed to get the right direction of Prabhupada's intention. I don't see anybody in the Holy Skan is explaining, you know, things in a very proper perspective. They cannot, and they they just cannot do it. I don't see even in other ritual camps also. Do you think so? Hmm? Yeah, well, I think yeah. The explanation that they give is very different. At least in terms of how it is even presented, right? I think uh, it's far more clear in terms of how it's been presented. Because you have to explain based on Shastric evidence. Hmm. Now you ask this question to them, they'll give you a roundabout bush question answers, you know. Hmm. Yeah, it's, but you see, I've taken you to all parts of the Bhagavad where it is dealing with this subject, is it not? Your question, as now you ask you, the question you are asking me, see, this king is also asking, is it not? Hmm. Yes? Yeah. So then you are convinced, so, because I'm on the, you know, I'm not wasting time, no? Correct? Hmm. So that's the duty of the, of anyone who's been an instructing, you know, spiritual master, shiksha guru, whatever, hmm? Hmm. has to upgrade the disciple to increase their faith. You understand? Hmm. But if they give doubts, then what's the, what the point? Yes? It is all coming because of false ego, you know. This false ego business is what is this all? Because someone is in false ego, this is the problem, you know. Hmm? False ego living entity places him in bondage, which words him exactly the opposite of what he really desires. Therefore, an intelligent person should give up his constant anxiety to enjoy material life and remain situated in the Lord is beyond the functions of material consciousness. Hmm? This false ego is the source of all doubts, you know. You should consider how with the influence of my illusion energy, these three states of the mind caused by the modes of nature have been artificially matched to exist in me. Having differently ascertained the truth of the soul, you should utilize the sharpened sword of knowledge, quite by logical reflection from the instructions of sages and Vedic literatures, to completely cut off the false ego, which is the breeding ground of all doubts. All of you should then worship me, whom I am situated within the heart. This is the problem. Understand? In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explained very simply, you know, you should not think you are the doer, you know. Ahankara Vimudatma, you know. But here, you see, he explaining. The false ego is the breeding ground of all doubts. So, all these things is coming from the bodily identification. Mm. The moment you say, I am Tamil, I am Telugu, I am, you know, Japanese and what not, then finish. You cannot understand anything, eh? finish. Then is what was going on now in the whole world, you know, fighting, quarreling, bickering, this thing, that thing. 
So we have to learn how to cross over this. And you cannot do it without the help of an expert spiritual, bona fide spiritual master. It is not possible. You understand? You try to think that you can do all this without the help of a bona fide guru, then you'll counter hundreds of obstacles. Correct? Hmm? Yes. Yes, bro. This program, it is not some whimsical thing, you know. Everything is under the tight control of Krishna. The living entity, he cannot escape this bonding. You know. It is engineered by Krishna in such a way uh, that you cannot, by any chance, come out. Not possible. You understand? It's not possible. You don't speak about your karma thing. Even in, even you try to use your mental, you know, so-called. Eh? Uh, intellectual capacity to figure out, that also is not possible. You understand? You can read? Let me offer my respectful basis of the all-pervading supreme personality God, possesses unlimited transcendental qualities. Acting from within the course of the heart of all philosophers who propagate various ways, views, he causes them to forget their own souls, but sometimes agreeing, sometimes disagreeing among themselves. Thus, he creates in this medieval world a situation in which they are unable to come to a conclusion. Uh, for my basis, is not Understand? Mm -hmm. Karma is binding. That's a fact. You cannot escape. It's clear. I have explained at length. Jnana also, you cannot come out. Mm -hmm. Understand? It's not possible. I don't speak about yoga. You that, forget it, you know. That's <laughs> why yeah. so I say, Bhakti Maam Abhijananti. Finish. It is not possible by any other means. Is it clear? Yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you. That's why Krishna says, Sarva Dharma Parityaja Maam Ekam Sharanam Bhuja. He didn't say for fun, no? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so. We, we have to learn how to go to Krishna completely. You know, there's so many times. ekena manasa, Krishna says. You know, with one-pointed attention. Yes. Hmm? There's no other way, you know. There's not, there, you cannot come out of this material world by any other method, you know. By interaction of energies, different opinions arise. But those who fix the intelligence and mean control their senses, differences of perception disappear and consequently the very cause for argument is removed. Only by fixing on Krishna. Only by devotional service. Mm -hmm. You know? Only by devotional service this is uh, possible. Mm -hmm. 
My dear Radhavadi, anal and devotional service is rendered to me by my devotee. He springs me under the control. I cannot be thus controlled by those engaged in mystic yoga, Sankhya philosophy, pious book, Vedic study, austerity, or unsuitable. Cannot. There's no way you can get out unless you surrender. That also to pure devotee. Although you know devotional service, unless you get a proper pure devotee, bona fide, that's not going to be working. You know. Mm. You understand? Right. Uh, you follow? Uh. Uh? Any other questions? Hare Krishna, Prabhu. I have one question. Yes. So, uh, Prabhu, uh, while preaching, uh, we encounter different types of people, like someone uh, maybe innocent and uh, listens favorably. And someone tries to argue with us while uh, while we uh, do our preaching. So, uh, so what what should be our position? Should we associate uh, with them who tries to argue until preach go on preaching, or we should uh, avoid them? If he is arguing and but is interested in learning, that's another thing, no? But, but if he is simply... not interested in learning, like he he. Then what is the use, yeah. no, of talking Just to somebody? Just put switch point, yeah. Wasting time, no? Okay. Yes? Okay, yeah. yeah yes. What the use of talking to somebody who just want to waste time, no? Yes. We should have helped the innocent, those who are interested in making progress. Yes? Yes. So someone who thinks he no need to learn, then why you need to teach him, no? Right. Yes, sir. And if you got a lot of time to waste, yeah, you can carry on. <laughs> a lot of guys, you know, they think they are too smart. What's the point? If you don't want to, you don't want to learn, then why I have to come and teach you for what? Yeah. Correct. That's why in the Bhagavad Gita it says you must first surrender. That with the pranipate na, pranipate na. You surrender first, and then only you can impart. Then not surrender. Then after that you have to do seva. Then only you give him knowledge. Understand, the spiritual master is not a joke, no. Right? Spiritual master means you must surrender. You know, it's explained here. You want to read this? One must accept the bona fide spiritual master and render service unto him with great devotion and faith. Whatever one has in possession should be offered to the spiritual master. And in the association of saintly persons and devotees, one should worship the Lord, hear the glories of the Lord with faith, glorify the transcendent qualities and activities of the Lord, always meditate on the Lord's lotus feet, and worship the deity of the Lord strictly according to the injections of the Sastra and Guru. In the previous verse, it has been said that the process which immediately increases one's love and affection for the Supreme Person of God is the best for many thousands of ways to become free from the entanglement of material existence. It is also said, "Dharma satyam nisam bhujay bhujayam." Actually, the fruit of religious principles is extremely confidential. Nonetheless, it can be understood very easily if one actually adopts the principle of religion. As it is said, Kadmin Kushaksha in a word Pranitam, in a Bhagavad Gita 6319, the process of religion is enunciated by the Supreme Lord because he is the Supreme Authority. This is also indicated in the previous verse by the word Bhagavad Gita Vitaha. The injections or directions of the Lord are infallible and their benefits are fully assured. According to his directions, which are explained in these words, the perfect form of religion is Bhakti Yoga. To practice Bhakti Yoga, one must first accept a bona fide spiritual master. 
sila doon pa goes kami in Pagtira sa amin sa mga 1274 devices. Guru Padas Reyes Tasmat Krishna Diksha Disik Sanam Visram Hena Guru Seva Sadhu Vartamanu Vartanam Sa Dharma Pratcha Bhogati Yaga Krishna Sya Etave A one's first duty is to accept the Bona Fashti which is master. The student or disciple should be very inquisitive. He should be very he should be eager to know the complete truth about eternal religion, Sanatana Dharma. The words Guru Susru Saya mean that one should personally serve the spiritual master by giving him bodily, com bodily comforts, helping him in bathing, dressing, sleeping, eating, and so on. This is called Guru Susru, Susru Sanam. A disciple should serve the spiritual master as a menial servant, and whatever he has in his position should be dedicated to the spiritual master. Prane, Arthel, Jiya, Vacha. Everyone has his life, his wealth, his intelligence, and his words, and all of them should be offered to the Supreme Personal to order through the via the medium of spiritual master. Everything should be offered to the spiritual master as a matter of duty, but the offering should be made to the spiritual master with heart and soul, not artificially to gain material prestige. This offering is called Arpana. Moreover, one should live among devotees, saintly persons to learn the adequate and proper behavior of devotional service. Sita Vishwanatha Chakravarti Thakura remarks in this connection that whatever is offered to the spiritual master should be offered with love and affection, not for material adoration. Similarly, it is recommended that one associate with devotees, but there must be some discrimination. Actually, sadhu, a saintly person, must be saintly in his behavior. Sadha va sadhacharaha. Unless one adheres to the standard behavior, one's position as a sadhu, a saintly person, is not complete. Therefore, a Vaishnava, a sadhu, must completely adhere to the standard of behavior. Sila Vishwanatha Chakravarti Thakura says that a Vaishnava, a person initiated into a Vaishnava cult, should be offered the respect befitting a Vaishnava, which means that he should be offered service and prayers. However, one should not associate with him if he is not a fit person with whom to associate. This is your question. Uh, yes, Prabhu, actually, uh, yeah. So that means uh, for them who, who are actually, uh, who don't listen, like who are envious, who are envious of uh, devotees and uh, so for them, uh, we should uh, never preach and we should try to avoid them at, at all at respect. Yeah, the Sanskrit word is upekchaha, neglect. You know? Okay. Oh. Yeah. Mm. So is, is it, uh, is, that means there is no hope for them that like, uh, they, they can never be Coming, coming to this uh, consciousness, Krishna consciousness, like uh, we should think less or anything. Uh, unless they come they, in they, contact with the pure devotee, then only. You know, sometimes when they get into some real, you know, what we say, trouble, then their false ego gone, they are humble up, then yes. Okay. Understand? Okay. Otherwise, yes. how to learn? Correct? Yes. You're full of false ego. I read this now the verse. Correct? Yes, sir. Huh? Ahankara karma bandhanam. Yes. So you see, this material world is for all of us, you know, who are in this position. Correct? This is why the material world is created. Because we all are full of ahankar, no? Yes? So to get out of this place, we have to surrender. Some surrender, some don't. Some, you know, have to learn hard way. Some have to learn, you know, different ways. Correct? You follow? As Krishna says, as you surrender, I reward accordingly. No? 
Yes. And if you don't surrender, that also reward is there, no? Yes. For those who are mischievous and envious, I reward them by sending them to the darkest region, no? Correct? Yes, sir. Yes or not? Hmm? Yes, yes. So we should be, we should know. So how to preach to these guys? Yeah, let's wait, no? Correct? Mm. Yes. Yes. Actually, the best way to preach to all these crazy guys is to give proper books, you know. Mm. That's the only way for them, you know. If they can somehow or other read, you know, their life will change. Mm. Yes. It's not possible by your or my preaching, you know. Yes. Yes, you pray. You have to try to encourage them to read proper books, you know. Then, yes. You know, as I was explaining in that verse, you know. And to convince somebody. Hmm? To convince someone to take up a devotional service, you need a lot of, you know, not an ordinary thing, you know. Hmm? Can you read? He's such a great personality that by his mercy he can convert even the meat eaters nature to the devotional service of Krishna, who therefore can estimate the power of his Vaishnavism. It is extremely difficult to convert a Vaishnava or meat eater into a devotee of Lord Krishna. Therefore, anyone who can do is uh, do so is situated on the highest level of Vaishnavism. <laughs> Understand me. <coughs> it's not something anyone can do because Advaita Acharya, yeah, <coughs> Krishna first spoke about him. <coughs> can you read? Nevertheless, my mind has become purified because I have associated with Advaita Acharya, who is directly the Supreme Person of God. He is unparalleled in his understanding of all the revealed scriptures and the devotional service of Lord Krishna. Therefore, he is called Advaita Acharya. So because he is directly the Supreme Personality of God, so to convert some meat-eaters to devotional service, you should be in the level of some Vishnu Tattva, no? Maybe you are, that's why you are preaching to these people. <laughs> no, 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 that's what that was the question actually. So we should try to avoid them as much as possible. No, so, you should give. You, you should give them Prabhupada books. Not books. Okay. Understand? Yeah, bro. But we should not uh, we should not associate with them by talking with them like those things we should not try no, to you can talk. We're not saying you don't talk. You can talk, you know. But you really want to do the real okay. preaching work. You have to think of how to get mm. the guy to read the book, no? You understand? Okay. 
Mm-hmm. What is the use yeah. of preaching, Prabhu? Our preaching, I don't know, maybe yours, but my preaching is definitely out of this, you know. I understand. So we should learn how to give Prabhupada. Mm-hmm. Yeah? You follow? Sundar Srinivas Prabhu and Nitya Dinesh. Prabhu, you said you should give them Prabhupada's books. So, uh, in our stock of uh, books, we have uh, 25 copies of Valmiki Ramayan uh, uh, written by Bhakti Vikas Swami. So, what Hmm. do we do with those books, Prabhu? We don't. Up to you, what do you want to do with it? You bought it, right? Thanks, Prabhu. We want to, uh, yesterday we just, uh, I mean, I, we didn't want to distribute, I don't want to distribute it because it's written by an offender to Prabhupada. And so we just gave five to the local Ramalaya. There's a Ram temple, we just gave it to them. So that is also distribution. I just want to just, to dispose those books in the Goda. <laughs> we just have only 25 books and 200 rupees, nothing much. Anyway, better to give Prabhupada books. Could you repeat what, 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 how do we, uh, what do we do? Better, better to give Prabhupada books. Yes, only or? Yes. yes, Prabhupada said, I came to get right books. And you are giving something else. Uh, what will that be? Yes? Right or not? Some or other, if you can give someone these books, their life will change. That's all. Even Prabhupada say, if they don't read, even if they touch, they benefit. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, there is also uh, some books that are written by, uh, I think we have a couple of copies, uh, two stories from the Bhagavatam and one Krishna story written by Pura Pragna Das. I think he's either Iskon camp, he's in uh, the Bogus Guru camp. What do we do with those books? Again, dispose. Whatever, whatever you want to do, no, you already got them. Hmm. Try to work on giving Prabhupada books, whatever you have first, no? Yes, all these other that. books, all these other books, you just can keep it on the site, you know? Huh? Keep it in sight or out of sight or? Whatever, like, you know, but concentrate on doing Prabhupada Yeah, we are doing that, Prabhu. We are trying to exhaust the Prabhupada books uh, mm. as quickly as possible. Yes, don't not just only give the books out, eh? you also should read them, you know. That's probably. But my books are not only for distribution, bro, but said you should also for reading, you know. Yes. Eh? Okay, Everybody think that I have read Bhagavad Gita once, I have read everything once, that's enough, you know. Okay, bro. This is the problem. Okay, bro. You have to read it over and over again, you know. Yes. Prabhu Hare Krishna. Correct. Hare Krishna. Uh, Prabhu mm. Hare Krishna. Uh, These this books were brought long back, maybe two, three years back. Those books are on my own. Okay, at that time, at that time I was not ISKM. At that time. So mm. those books I purchased right, around uh, around five thousand rupees or something, four thousand to five thousand butter books. Is it uh, last for our temple? No. I think if I can give them freely. Because now I don't. I don't know. It's your decision what you want to do with it, you know. Okay. But I'm saying they are worthless. <laughs> because they are written by all these crazy guys, you know. Yes, yes. Okay. What you want to do with it is your choice. Hey, okay. Okay. Huh? Oh, yeah. I thought giving some people maybe some those give some donations. I can give freely what, uh, maybe. 
yeah what you do if you give to them these books they will not become proper devoted disciples yeah, yeah. Yeah, the person has donated to you. You show sure one him to become a devotee, no? Yeah. Correct. Yes, sir. Yeah, along with proper book also, I can give like that. Yeah, but so, usually yeah. when you give this book, they will pick up the Ramayana first. But simple language that is no sloka and nothing. Just like story. Yeah, again. they like to read like this, and then when they read and then finish, they will throw it aside. Finish. They will not even bring proper books. But if you yeah. give only proper books, then you will force to read only proper books, right? Oh, okay. Okay. Yes or no? Yeah, yeah. Can you want him to be your devotee or you don't want to? Yeah, devotee should be. Yeah. That means okay. you have to give proper books. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Proper said, distribute my books. Did he ask you to distribute other books? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and also I heard if we have time, we can also. I I heard somebody told me if we have time, we can also read book Mahabharata. And uh, if we have like that, is it correct, Prabhu? I don't know whether it is correct or not. With Ram Mahabharata, you you, you Ram. can read, you can read because you are now a bit matured in devotional service. Understand? Uh, yeah, you know how to make some distinction. Correct. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, those at are... Least, at least you know some story about Mahabharata and all, because you're useful for your knowledge, no? Yeah. You understand? Yes, yeah. But not that you only read Mahabharata and only read Ramayana. Yeah. Is that, that yes, a sir. fact? Yeah. You understand? Oh, that way. Yes, sir. Yeah. Ah. So someone asks you about Mahabharata, at least you know how it is connecting, you know? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. We cannot say we don't know something like about Ramayana and all. We should know something yeah, about. Yeah, correct. Generally, for people that, ask some questions. For yeah, that, yeah. for general knowledge, that's all right. No. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. Understand. Understand. Mm. So that yeah, not distribute that one. We maybe one or two times we can read and just leave that. Hmm. That's okay. okay. Of course, here in our Singapore, also we are distributing this Mahabharata Ramayana. Yeah. yeah, the book they are buying. Yeah, but what to do? Hope them to come back again and see yeah. if they can understand okay. Krishna consciousness. Hmm? Yeah. You also purchase from uh, BBT Prabhu that uh, Mahabharata and all. Yeah, we buy, buy from Bangalore, you know. Yeah, Bangalore. I don't know Bangalore or somebody in Bandavan is selling this. Ramayana Mahab, but this Purna Pragya, you know, thing. Yeah, yeah Purna Pragya, Prabhupada, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, he wrote, yeah. Yes, yeah, he uh, uh, wrote this Mahabharata Ramayana. Anyway, yeah. you think about giving more Prabhupada books, that's the best. Yeah, yeah, huh? I have only a few books that is a long back I purchased, not now. Then I just kept there in the stall. Okay, somebody wants it. Take what to do. <laughs> I'm not distributing anyway. <laughs> Someone comes to the office there, and a book stall. <laughs> Take like that. Any other questions? Prabhu, regarding distribution of books, what about other books like uh, Second Chance and those books which came after uh, Prabhupada? As long as it got all quotes of Prabhupada, no harm, no. Give me a minute. Hare Krishna. Uh, temple is open from 5 o'clock in the morning to 12.30 uh, in the afternoon. Uh, and then from 4 o'clock to 9 o'clock in the evening. Hmm? Yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, you can come on, huh? Yes, is uh, nearer to this uh, Aljuna MRT station. Hmm? 
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Prabhupada. So you understand? Yeah. Yes. What is that you ask? There is this book called uh, Prabhuji, uh, there is this book uh, called uh, Finding Our Lost Happiness. Very catchy title. And uh, but, uh, it's said written by Prabhupada and his disciple. And I can't make out from the book what what is written by Prabhupada and what is written by his disciples. It just seems to be a so confusion. I'm not sure I want to uh, give that book. It's a confusion. Huh? There's so many other it's, Prabhupada. It's difficult books. to make so you, you do this better, no? This is the best thing you should need to do. And, and uh, uh, Prabhuji, the, the Amlapuram uh, temple temple budget is about one. Can you read this? Can you please read this? Can you read this, please? You ask me the question. Can you read this, please? Dinesh, can you read? Yes, Prabhuji. Madhya 22.118. The twelfth item is to give up the company of non-devotees. Thirteen. One should not accept an unlimited number of uh, disciples. And one should not partially study many scriptures just to be able to give references and expand explanations. Accepting an un the unlimited number of devotees or disciples is very risky for one who is not a preacher. According to Srila Jeeva Goswami, a preacher has to accept many disciples to expand the cult of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. This is risky because when a spiritual master <laughs> accepts disciples, he naturally accepts the disciples' sinful activities and their reactions. Unless he is very powerful, he cannot assimilate <laughs> all the reactions of his disciples and has to suffer the consequences. Therefore, one is generally forbidden to accept many disciples. One should not partially study a book just to pose oneself as a great scholar by being able to refer to scriptures. In our Krishna conscious movement, we have therefore limited our study of the Vedic literatures to Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Charitamrita, and, uh, and Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. These four works are sufficient for preaching purposes. They are adequate for the understanding of the philosophy and the spreading of missionary activities all over the world. If one studies a particular book, he must do so thoroughly. That is the principle. By thoroughly studying a limited number of books, one can understand the philosophy. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Is that clear? Yes, Prabhuji. They just so, study uh, these four books. That's all. Okay, Prabhuji. I am quoting uh, only from these books. Am I quoting from something else? No, Prabhuji. Hmm? Yes. So why I have to read this and that and this, all this stuff, you know, why? Huh? Okay, Prabhuji. Uh, any other I questions? A, yes, hmm? Prabhuji, I have one more question. Why should we distribute any other books other than these four books, Prabhuji? The small books are all Prabhupada books, okay? Hmm? Distribute the small Prabhupada books. That's also all right. Hmm? Okay, thank you very much, Prabhuji. Mm. I'd like to also thank pra Prahlad Prabhu. Yesterday I asked him, day before yesterday I asked him the question. In Nectar of Devotion it said, uh, uh, right, practically one has seen that if we, uh, if, uh, so if uh, somebody reads the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam, Nectar of Devotion, and the ch teachings of Lord Chaitanya, uh, 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 right? This is enough to understand the science of uh, consciousness and go back to Godhead chapter in, in uh, Nectar of Devotion. And then uh, Prahlad Prabhu told me at that time, uh, 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 at that time, uh, Chaitanya Charitamrita was in stores, uh, the teachings of Lord. Uh, Charitam, uh, Lord Chaitanya is a summary study of Chaitanya. Uh, Prabhupada wrote, gave that instruction, but we, the, he actually ended for 
Chaitanya Charma. Thank you very much for this. Talk. Thank you, Prahlad Prabhu. Any other questions? Hare Krishna Prabhu, you can hear me Prabhu? No more questions. Everybody is silent. Prabhu, Hare Krishna. All right, I guess. Huh? Prabhu, you can hear me? Yeah. Yes. Actually, that is a question. Uh, why that surrendered devotees, I mean those who are in the temple, not surrendered means not pure devotees, those who are serving the temple, why they get some difficulties sometimes, you know, like uh, accidents or some this and that. So that is a question. So I'm just... Uh, I mean, it's not my doubt. I'm just asking on behalf of somebody. Why the devotees must go through difficulties sometimes? Like they get accidents and this and that. Why? They are, they are surrendered. They are doing devotional service. Why Krishna failed to, devote, to save the devotees? Okay. okay. I think this is in this verse. Okay, this verse. Can you read, please? My dear Lord, My dear Lord. one who oh, earnestly yes. waits for you to bestow your costless mercy upon him, all the while patiently reactions of his past mistakes and offering you respectful obeisances within his heart words and body is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim. Sridhar Goswami explains in his commentary that just as a legitimate son has to simply remain alive to gain uh, an inheritance from his father, one who simply remains alive in the consciousness following the regular principles of Bhakti Yoga. Personality of God. In other words, he will be promoted to the kingdom of God. The word Su Samikshamana indicates that a devotee earnestly awaits the mercy of the Supreme Lord, even while suffering the painful effects of previous sinful activities. Lord Krishna explains in Bhagavad Gita that a devotee who fully surrenders unto him is no longer liable to suffer reactions from his previous karma. However, because in his mind, a devotee may still maintain the remnants of his previous sinful uh, mentality. Cases of enjoying the spirit by giving his devotee punishments that sometimes resemble sinful reactions. The purpose of a day creation of God is to rectify the living entities uh, to enjoy without the Lord. And therefore, the particular punishment given for a sinful activity specifically designed to curtail the mentality that produced that activity. Although can you scroll up bro? Although although a devotee has surrendered to the Lord's devotional service until he is completely perfect in Krishna consciousness, he may maintain a slight inclination to enjoy the false happiness of, of this world. The Lord, therefore, creates a particular situation to eradicate the remaining enjoying spirit. This unhappiness that suffered by a sincere devotee is not uh, a karmic reaction. It is rather the Lord's special mercy including his devotee to completely let go of the material world to then home back to God. A sincere devotee earnestly is that understood? Is that, is that understood? understood? 
प्रभु इज दैट अंडरस्टूड यस प्रभु so that karma the devotee suffers is mainly to get him purified okay. because he has got some desires so krishna is trying to purify that desires hmm? you understand but devotee actually got no more karma because he is already surrendered to krishna you know so because he has some desires so krishna by that so it looks like he is getting some karma but actually is not hmm? that's why it says karma like parichit maharaj is bitten by snake and he went back to guard it bishma dev he got so many arrows on his body correct hmm yes sir Yes. yes. Understand. So devotee, we cannot uh, try to understand by normal within the karmi. It's not what we say correct, you know. Understand. so you cannot also live in this world thinking that oh we are devotees the e problem we can go on enjoying ourselves that also not right you understand you follow yes bro so you now know why the body is getting into trouble also Is it clear? Okay, clear. Thank you. Any other questions? Prabhu, uh, I have a question for the Indonesia. So, um, Victor, suppose we uh, sell uh, a book and we get money into the book fund, Prabhu. can we repurpose the money book for the book from the book fund that's according to the managers you know uh, what we say priority hmm? okay prabhu ji okay prabhu ji hmm. thank you very much So I wish you all a very happy Krishna Conscious New Year. Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Prabhu. Thank you, Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you. You will learn a few things from this. Many, Prabhu, not few. Maybe you can uh, play this uh, video, huh? you can share it on the youtube or something huh? yes sir yes so many things we covered huh? yes yes sir so okay i humbly request your kind blessings that we will also have a successful krishna conscious here serving prabhu pat all glory to all of you hmm? hare krishna all glory for your kind time hare krishna thank you very much hare krishna